Hello everybody, it's Assistant Ben Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the TNH-105-1000, a Czechoslovakian Tier 8 tank. Now, um, whenever it comes down to it, I have put a decent amount of time inside of grinding out these tanks and, you know, putting in the work to make sure that I have an idea how these tanks are playing. And I'll tell you guys now, they have surprised me in a lot of ways. The versatility between let's say the the single shot or even if you want to use the double shot I find these tanks to be absolutely outstanding with the way that they are put together so let's go ahead jump into some statistics and go over the tanks with the pros and cons that these tanks do have so let's go ahead and dive right into it as I am setting up my uh, my okay I changed it around I've been doing a lot of little things to make stuff just a little bit better as you guys can hear with the extra stuff now starting off penetration 224 252 and then 53 millimeters of high explosive pin um, the premium ammunition is a PCR and you know like it's okay 252 with a lot of the buffs that have been going into game as of recent there has been a lot of things changing with let's say like with the Japanese heavy tanks the Oni the Oho the 230 millimeters that those tanks now have it makes it really difficult to pin them up in the front with the even with 252 pin you are finding yourself bouncing consistently other than that this thing is performing pretty well if you're top tier even if you're bottom tier you can still dish out that 640 potential clip or you can do with the single shot now Max speed at 50, uh, power to weight is around 15.63, so if you guys want to run power terrain on this, I actually do not find this thing's going to need a power terrain to boost that overall top speed. You are lacking inside the view range department, however, at 370 base view range, fully upgraded, 360 if you're still running the uh, stock turret, so I do recommend that you do get the upgraded turret unless you enjoy the stock turret for whatever reason. Now, 1,500 hit points, it's a chunky boy, it's not too bad. Along with that, still concealment of 0.11. It is an average concealment for a heavy tank. It is a little bit on the high side, but don't rely on it too much. You're definitely not going to be able to stay concealed out a whole lot. Along with that, 6 rounds per minute, a 10 second reload right on the dot. But you can get this down to an 8 second reload or 8.1 second reload with a single shot. And if you're running the dual shot, you're looking at a 23 second reload. And I can't remember off the top of my head what the reload would be with a fully maxed out crew. But I do recommend optics and situational awareness on this tank. If you're not using optics and situational awareness combined, you will find yourself being a little bit limited. Now, ammunition-wise, 44 rounds. Um, in the entire time I've played the tank, I have not come close to going through my entire ammunition reserves. So I think you guys should be okay with that. Along with that, 0.35 accuracy, 7 degrees of gun depression, and then 15 degrees of gun elevation. Now, 7 degrees gun depression, I do find myself every once in a while getting a little bit stuck out and struggling with it just because with seven degrees of gun depression it's not the most and it's not the least amount it's kind of that dead center of what you want for comfort but then not enough and you find yourself struggling at times to be able to really get that one shot in that you want you gotta get some weird positions so that yeah, there is that could go a lot better but it's it's what it is with seven degrees then again it is kind of the limiting factor whenever you can do 640 potential output now turret armor 230 in the front we're actually going to jump in, in here in a second it actually takes 279 millimeters of average penetration to be able to go through that turret if you're shooting the cheeks of it at all now 30 de uh, 30 degrees of traverse speed in the turret it, it's highly responsive engine you know we already mentioned this you have 50 top speed 15.63 horsepower to ton so horsepower to weight 750 overall horsepower 15 percent fire chance um in the 40 or so matches i put inside the tier 8 
I have not been set on fire one time, so that fuel tank is very well defended, and I think you guys are going to be totally okay. Now, traverse speed on the tracks are looking at 30 degrees, terrain resistance of 1.2, 1.5, and 2.3. I do recommend off-road driving on this tank, because without it, you do feel a tad bit sluggish, and you are going to be getting caught out, and I'm sorry in advance. However, I have a button for that now. It makes it so much easier. And then signal range of 850, that's going to make it, you know, for assist damage, 850 is going to be absolutely fantastic. Now, jumping over, let's go ahead and take a look at the armor here. As I was saying, you know, if you're shooting the inside of the cheek here, you're going to need 230, but if you're shooting the left side, you're going to need about 279 millimeters of penetration to go through this reliably if you are hitting the left side. However, you do have a big all fat hatch at 150. The top plate though at 125 millimeters, this top plate does feel pretty good, but it is already kind of on a, um, it's on a decent slant, nothing too crazy. If you're flat on heading towards somebody and let's say that they're loading premium, your upper hull armor is gonna be struggling a tad bit unless you are using your maxed out gun depression, which gives you 283 effective against APCR and then 259 effective against AP. So premium AP rounds will be able to go through this consistently. So for instance, let's say like the Charlemagne and probably the number one thing that's going to be making a lot of people not like this a whole lot is standard rounds from tier 10s with 258 millimeters plus worth of penetration. This is one thing I have mentioned in the past with the difference between AP shells and APCR 260 right here so let's go ahead load the APCR let's get the gun back right on us 279 jump back to AP 257 around the same area so this is kind of the downfall to these tanks that even one of you are using your maxed out gun depression they will find that high penetration AP rounds are going to be the death of them along with heat rounds in general but if you do want to bait a couple of shells that 145 millimeter low plate does fill really nice um 80 millimeters of side armor their top armor we're looking at 25 52 in the back of the turret we're looking at 30 millimeters top of the hatch 30 millimeters yes artillery is going to hurt this thing quite a bit i do like however that the rear is 55 millimeters with um a little bit of space protection coming from the tracks because they overextend the tad bit so some people trying to shoot into the tracks not thinking about it every once in a while they might miss your track and just hit the drive well and ricochet off the rear because it is 55 millimeters of uh, armor so that is pretty nice you can essentially if you want to risk it for the biscuit use your rear end to bait a shot i i'd highly advise against it though that doesn't sound like a good time now with these tanks um one thing i have found that in the time I've been playing it, something I've used against the tier 9 consistently and the tier 10. Some people like to hit a rock and they like to bump up their armor to increase their top armor while staying a little bit side scraped outside. All you have to do is fire up in into the under armor right above the tracks and you're going to be guaranteeing damage every single time. So there is that as well. Um... 90 millimeters of side armor all across the side of the turret going all the way down along with that the back of the turret looking at 60 millimeters high explosives are going to be struggling to pin this tank that is for sure other than that you guys let's go ahead and dive right into the replays here and on the first map we're going to be taking a look at overlord for me i have definitely found that these tanks can perform where you want them to perform. Um, overall, I have not found anything that's going to be really limiting these tanks. Their damage per minute, you know, we're looking at 2,400 with the uh, single shot, and with the double shot, we're going to be looking at a damage per minute. Your damage per minute with the double shot is definitely going to be falling off at 1,811. Shell velocity, on the other hand, these are not bad shells. Your standard rounds travel at 930 meters a second. Your premiums travel at 1,020 per second. And your high explosives travel at 830 per second. So, talking about the tank in full and how I feel about it with, you know, the past week that I've been investing inside these tanks, I can definitely say that... They are surprisingly powerful tanks. 
Um, out of the tier 8, the 9, and the 10, I find that the tier 8 for me is probably the most versatile out of the bunch. Just because you have that really weirdly shaped armor. You had that very thick frontal plate, very thick lower plate, and if you come up and you like to bait shells, even against tier 10s, you can bounce consistently if you know the angles that you want to achieve. But whenever it comes down to getting rushed inside these tanks, if you're not careful, you can find yourself getting caught out pretty easily. So, the grind through the line, the grind through the eight, um, I still have not yet used stock gun on this. I do not know what the stock grind on this tank was like. I had enough free experience at the time to basically completely get out the tank with the uh, double shot, not the single shot. Basically, the second to last gun, and then I had to grind out for that um, final turret. The first turret on this, I wasn't really a big fan of it. I kind of felt like there, almost no matter what I was doing, I was getting hit and pinned consistently up in the front, even though it was uh, 210, 200 millimeters. Like, it was a, it seemed like a pretty decent turret to use right off the bat. It had some pretty good angles. A little bit of spaced armor up in the front with some side shields. But overall, the turret itself just felt a little bit lackluster. 20 millimeters of spaced armor right in the front of it. It's not a bad turret with the stock turret, but it just felt a little bit off. You could definitely tell that the speed difference, the hit points, and the view range, there was definitely a pretty big difference there. Now, speaking about the overall performance of the tank, the top speed allows you to be extremely aggressive and get in there as fast as you can. Just being able to move around and do whatever you really need to do. This thing is fast, aggressive, and just really... It, it feels really powerful for a tier 8. And I guess one of the biggest limiting factors that this thing has is its penetration being at, you know, 252 with premium and 224 with your standards. That would probably be the best limiting factor. If this thing had more penetration, it could be equivalent to a tier 9 with how it is. Then again, tech tree tanks, they should be outperforming premium tanks as a whole lot, and I can definitely say this thing definitely feels like it's outperforming most tier 10s and most tier 9s whenever I am using it, and it is in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But then again, it is new. You can't say that it's new. Or, I mean, depending on when you're watching this, it might not be new anymore. And by that point, people are just shredding through it like paper. But hey, as of right now, it is definitely new. So, not even a first-class mastery badge, just a second-class mastery badge inside that match. And decent performance. 2,930 damage dealt with 1,200 assisted. And... Yeah, during the time that I was recording for this, um, I ended up in a, a bunch of 10 matches, so we're going to be using um, a lot of bottom tier replays. But this is just to show off like with what the penetration is and how it can perform as a bottom tier, rather than showing off matches that are going to be like, oh, we're top tier, let's show off what this thing can do just to decimate a flank and everything else. Whenever you're top tier, this tank is extremely difficult to counteract. Especially if it's running the double shot, you're not going to be able to catch it out easily. It is going to be being an absolute nuisance to take out. But with that hatch, it is a big massive hatch. And talking about the stock turret on this tank, the reason why I struggle with the stock turret, if you guys take a look at the stock turret, you can pretty much check that through the armor viewer inside the game. There's a giant bar on top of the turret that's only 135 millimeters, and it's pinnable almost no matter the angle that you're at, which is kind of the limiting factor of that starting turret. Now, talking about the pros, um, with the double shot, just being able to pull a corner, throw one shell in two and a half seconds later, being able to throw a second shell out, is it does fill really good and here we are just sitting in front of the 10 just waiting for them to throw a shell into our face but lucky for us we got the shell in early and was able to back off now i i actually don't know what else to say about this tank um other than one of the cons being that if you're trying to side scrape if you have a slight elevation in your tank you are going to be finding yourself 
getting pinned consistently in the uh, Under Armour right above the tracks. Just because that's it's only 30 millimeters, 20 millimeters. It's low that every single gun inside the top tier get 25 millimeters on the tier eight. It's 25 millimeters of uh, Under Armour. It's just going to be getting overmatched by every single gun in tier eight and tier seven as well, since it's under 30 millimeters. So this tank. In my opinion, it's going to be a keeper. I'm going to be holding it inside my garage for quite some time. Um, I guess you can also say that for those of you who know the guns and know what guns enemies have, 76 millimeters can also overmatch your Under Armour as well. That helps you guys out at all with uh, just a little bit of extra information. There we go, firing a tad bit too early. E100. I mean, it, it's your bottom tier. There's only so much that you can do instead of a matchup like this. But keep track on how this tank is moving. This thing is definitely, for a heavy tank, I find it to be very mobile. Um, with the terrain resistance, though, you do need off-road driving. Without it, it will feel a little bit sluggish. And we're going to go ahead and start playing a little bit more aggressive here because we don't want to get caught in the back. We don't want to just sit in that background spot the entire time. There's one. There's two. And 640 potential, it, it's it's definitely devastating if you can land both those shells, especially for top tier. Sorry guys, I'm recording this early in the morning. It's a little bit too early for me. I'm just excited that I I am am able to test out a ton of new stuff and slowly uh, improve the quality of my videos and audio as you guys can hear right now we had the xlr finally hooked up and running so i'm pretty stoked that the xlr is working um i did a ton of streaming over uh the past couple of days putting in about 10 hours in total just to get the audio fixed and corrected however a lot of this game audio that you guys are hearing is based upon the old audio setup i've been changing a lot of the game audio that way, my voice is always going to be louder. However, I did not readjust any of these ones, but hopefully I'm coming through nice and clear for you guys. And pulling up, there we go. Nice shell lead right into it. I'm out of stuff to say about the tank. Honestly, guys, the tier 8, I have been enjoying playing this tier 8. Even after grinding out the entire line, this was the one that I pulled out again just to be able to rock. So far, we're right up to 920 blocked. I mean, even against tier 10s, this is mostly damage blocked against 8s and 9s. But even against tier 10s, you, you can block consistently. And the Under Armour, I definitely feel it kind of lacking a tad bit. He's going to fire. We're going to pull up. We're going to put one, and that's going to go into the tract. But we have a second shell to be able to put in. And there we go, as we're backing off, we're going to get penetrated into the lower plate through the tracks. But that's okay. Up to 2,510 damage, 949 assisted, and playing aggressive in the front line. I mean, that's kind of the way I look at this tank. It, it, it can get in there, so 18.7 on the reload. It can get in there, and you don't find it being much of a problem. And at the very end of this match, I remember saying, oh, it lit, it's Nameless Saint. And I, I couldn't help but giggle at the fact that uh, we just barely noticed who it was right at the end of the match there. Putting two shells in the back of the 705A, jump goes up to uh, 3,000 damage dealt. And now we're going to go ahead and push a tier 10 tick destroy. I mean, he is the last guy. I mean, what else are we going to do? We're just going to push in and stop right behind him. I mean, this match, <laughs> I can't believe that we were able to wait that entire 20 seconds to load in the shell before he was taken down. Um, another reason why I'm showing off these matches is because currently these things' mastery badges are very difficult to get. Um, don't look at the silver, whatever you do. That was from um, one of the heavy tank challenges that was going on completed. Second class mastery against tier 10s with 4,000 combined. Um, 4,600 combined with 1,689 experience. These tanks definitely right now have a very high damage standing, which is making it really difficult to master them 
Um, even uh, with some of the best matches that I've had, I have only gotten a first class mastery badge. I do believe that I did master the tier 8 before the XP threshold was thrown through the roof, you can say, because it quite literally was through the roof. But it, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, as time goes on, mastery badges for these things will be a little bit easier to earn, but as of right now, they are definitely difficult to get your hands on. Um, not really much else to say about the tank, except for I find it to be a very good performing tier 8 tank, and definitely a keeper that I'm going to be keeping inside my garage for a very long time. Other than that, you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the whole new setup. Also, the road mic, I am... am I am super enjoying this. I have set up my mixer, everything else, um, relinked all the audio, as you guys heard at the start of the video, with full control over that as well. And hopefully this makes stuff a lot easier to understand, rather than having a crackle or a little bit harder to understand me. I hope that this makes things a lot easier for everybody else. Other than that, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And there's going to be a lot more things changing about the videos that I'm going to be putting out in the future. I'm looking to get into it as much as I can and, well, stop slacking off like I have been. So, yeah, you guys have a good one. I'm out of here.